Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today on This Divorce Rx, your prescription for the divorce process. My name is Vicki Townsend. I'm the founder of the Cafe D, and today we are going to help make your life easier by helping you through a process that, as I know from firsthand experience, really is a very difficult transition. It's a difficult decision to make and the ones that you're going to be making as you go through this decision are going to determine some of the most important things that happens to you not only in the short term but in the long term. So today I'm actually really excited to have uh, our conversation about mediation. A lot of people don't even know that it actually exists and I will tell you that I have used mediation for one of my divorces Yes, I've had more than one. And I have to say that um, it has it, it, it was it was a somewhat sometimes an easy experience and sometimes it had its challenges, but I do know one thing is for sure. Had I had information like the information you're gonna learn today, I would have made a better decision and it would have probably been a lot easier process for me and it would have worked probably better for me. So I'm a really, really big um, proponent of education because education is power, right? We need to know exactly where we stand and we need to know where we want to be. And my goal for you is that at the end of all of this journey that you still maintain, that we have saved you time, money, and your sanity. So today we are going to be talking with an expert in the mediation um, arena. His name is Jeffrey Bloom. He's a graduate of Concord Law School, has over 13 years of experience as a litigation paralegal and a conflict resolution specialist. He has completed his master's degree in ne negotiation and dispute resolution from Crichton University and is a member of the New York State Council on Divorce Mediation as well as the Academy of Professional Mediators and has hosted a weekly radio talk show on AM 1240 WGBB in 2014 called The Mediator. Jeffrey served honorably in the United States Air Force, thank you for your service sir, for over 16 years serving in both Desert Storm and Iraqi Freedom. He is also the founder of Creative Resolutions and the Mediation Society of Long Island and is dedicated to helping people resolve important and personal issues, resolving issues that not only work today but also in the shadow of the future. I would like to welcome my very special guest, Jeffrey Bloom. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, how are you doing? I'm well. Thank you so much for being here. Today is a very important topic. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate today, it. We're going to be talking about how to save people potentially tens of thousands of dollars in this process by using something that you are an expert of and you know very well and I am um, a little bit of an expert on but only because I've been the, a user of, the, of the, um, the process. So you and I are going to have a great conversation and more importantly we are going to be um, saving uh, our, our listeners potentially tens of thousands of dollars they're going to know the actually what what a mediator is right we're going to be talking about that definition and how we can even go back and find one and you're going to be giving them some resources and even some tips on how they can interview and find the right mediator for them right correct right well i'm looking forward to um uh to, to learning more from you today because as I, as I told you earlier, I've been through the mediation process. I'm very well aware of, um, uh, you know, how it works. Um, the question that I, you know, have for you are, you know, what are some of the advantages versus the disadvantages of mediation? Well, uh, on a surface, uh, the advantages are time and money. Um, you go through the litigation process, and most people think that, okay, I'm getting divorced, I have to get an attorney, and my spouse has to get an attorney. Well, that's not true. Uh, but just take a step back. So you get an attorney here in New York, and I'm not sure how it works in the other states, but you're going to spend anywhere from a minimum of $15,000, $20,000 each just for a retainer for an attorney, and that's not going to be all-inclusive. And by the time all is said and done, two, three, or four, even five years later, and six figures later, uh, somebody's going to tell you what to do. In the mediation, you're in charge of the process. Nobody knows what's best for the children, for finances, 
for how to live going forward than you know mom and dad, Mary and John, um, and it's just important to know that in mediation the parties are in charge of the process. Litigation, somebody tells you what to do. Uh, mediation, the as a mediator, I facilitate the conversation, help you get through the barriers and the underlying issues, and whatever goes into the final agreement is what both of you want, not what I tell you or anybody else tells you what to do. That's fantastic. So um, the people need to, to be able to to have a clear clarity. That's that's the one thing that um, uh, has has come up time and time again when we're doing these Divorce Rx webinars is that clarity is your friend in all of this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so we, when we're not, well what I know is that you have prepared a presentation for us, so I will let you go ahead and do that. We'll have some, I have some other questions for you about the mediation process and maybe some questions about my own experience and so I'm going to let you go, so go ahead and, and share your screen. Sounds good, let me kind of set that up here. And And can you see that? And yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Bloom. Uh, I'm a professional mediator, conflict, excuse me, professional mediator, conflict resolution specialist, and I have an office in Westbury, and it's my website information. I just want to go over some of the services that I provide as a mediator. Give me one second. And Jeffrey, is this the, the services that you provide? Is this typical of what most mediators provide? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Some specialize in just family and divorce issues, uh, but I but I do some other mediation, uh, conflict resolution, which which um, could be it could be landlord tenant, it could be roommate issues, it could be contract disputes. Okay, so for right now, we're going to be chatting. Um, uh, about what you do in the divorce in the right. divorce. so go ahead and share your slides. Arbitration is another uh, venue that could be used uh, whereas mediation just explain the difference mediation is a voluntary process and the parties are unbound arbitration is a venue that uh, couples can go through also in fact I, what I do as a mediator sometimes I'll do a meet arb agreement. Uh, so, for example, let's say a couple comes in and we mediated, and there's 15 issues, and there's three that you just can't decide on, or two or one, whatever the case may be. So, rather than the mediation process break down and both of them leaving, going to attorneys, spending even more money, they may agree to let me arbitrate, and where they both get a chance to present their cases on those one, two, or three issues, and then I make a decision uh, that's binding upon them. Uh, to go on with the process. So that's just another service that I offer that's been very effective. I haven't used it much, but it but it's available. Wonderful. Well, you know what? I just wanted to let you know we're not seeing your slides, so if you want to put those back up. Um, that's... Somehow, somehow we, we we're seeing your beautiful face and not your gorgeous presentation that you that you created for us. Which is, which, is better than my, which is better than my face. Okay. No, not much. Okay. Um, in addition, no. I, don't, I don't know why it keeps, it keeps popping out. Yeah. And I don't know why. I'm sorry. Are you, are you clicking through your slides? Let's try yeah. it. You know, sorry, let me try it again. Let's, let's go. So you just said, Jeffrey, that the mediation process is not binding? Mediation is not binding. It's a voluntary process. But once you once you get everything worked out and then it's sealed, it's sealed by a judge and then it is binding. Correct. In, ver in other words, when I do a mediation, I'll provide the agreement for the for the parties. I'll, I'll do the uh, no-fault divorce paperwork. I'll file it in court for them. They don't even have to appear and the judge signs off on it. Uh -huh. So, so nothing is bonding until they sign off at the end. So the judge signs off, it and that makes it um, uh, binding. Now, Jeffrey, right. you put it on slideshow. So I did. So the last did. thing that popped up is workshops, and that's what I do, where I go into uh, organizations, uh, conflict resolution. Okay. Uh, business ombudsman services is similar to that, where I go in and help resolve conflicts in a business setting. 
as a neutral third party. You know, some businesses, for example, will say, well, we have an HR department for that, but the HR department is not a neutral third party. They answer to management. They have management's best interest in, in uh, line when they do things, so it's just not an effective way to do things. So uh, okay. just want to share exactly. it. The most popular, uh, this is the most popular radio station that everybody listens to it, uh, WIIFM, what's in it for me? People want, you know, going through divorce, they want to find out about mediation, why should they, you know, what, what's in it for them? Alternative dispute resolution and mediation. Again, this is an option uh, rather than going through the litigation process. And the creative resolutions, uh, my goal is we add value in helping people resolve conflict, become better leaders, and achieve positive results with a win-win strategy while helping people to become the best possible versions of themselves. And as we're going through the mediation process, what we do is we help people become better versions of themselves by better listening and, and being in the same room together and, and getting to the underlying issues. And it's so much easier to have a better understanding from both sides on how both sides are feeling when they're actually in a room together and there's less of a chance of a high conflict or major disagreement when there's a neutral third party mediator you know, helping in the process. There's a cartoon I want to share. Uh, it's only win-win if I win twice. Uh, there are many misconceptions about the differences between mediation and litigation. And there are many topics that are covered, and, and people have the idea that if they go to court, they're going to get what they're entitled to. I mean, you know, what does that mean? You know, nobody knows what they're going to get when they go before a judge. Nobody knows what a judge is going to decide. Nobody knows when the litigation process gets to a certain point, people run out of money, then what do they do? I had a couple who i done a free consultation with. I finally got them in. And then just as we were trying to get scheduled for the first session, she had said to him, I'm not going to a mediator. I'm going to take you for everything you got. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, I said, well, you know, what does that mean? You know, what if, so what if you get everything you, you're, you think you're entitled to, for lack of a better term? So let's just say the judge orders your husband to pay $2,000 a month of child support, $1,500 in maintenance, and whatever else you think you're entitled to. So now you got the, now you got the judgment. So six months, one year, maybe two years later down the line, uh, your husband can't, or your ex-husband in this case, can't pay for that due to finances, due to living conditions. Then what do you do? You have to hire another attorney or the same one, give them another retainer fee, bring your spouse back to court. Um, so there is no such thing as what you're entitled to. And so I just wanted to... I'll clarify that uh, when it comes to that. So, so let me ask you a question. When you're when you're in this, um, it, is it possible to bring in other professionals into this process, into this mediation process? Absolutely. There are. I always recommend that couples have e either or and the consulting attorney during the process, and at a minimum, a an attorney or review attorney that reviews the agreement before they sign. Since I'm acting in the realm of a mediator as a neutral third party, I can't represent either one of the parties. I can't give legal advice. That's also one of the myths of the mediation process, where when people will call and looking for a mediator, an attorney will tell them, well, the mediator's got to be an attorney. Well, that's not true at all. In fact, it's a bit, one of the biggest myths, because an attorney can't act in the role of an attorney if he or she is acting as a mediator. Well, that's very I important to know that. I yeah, I will say, Jeffrey, that this was the biggest mistake I made. Um, and this is why webinars like this one are so super important. Um, I did not hire a consultant, a, a consulting attorney. I don't know what that cost would have been, but it would have been minuscule for what I didn't get out of the process. And I wish that... Um, gosh, <laughs> this is the reason that I created the Cafe D, right? Because, you know, please, everyone, learn learn from my mistakes. But more importantly, just be educated, be open to this process, and understand that there's some amazing information. Just 
having a consulting attorney in this process would have changed my life. Um, you know, it would have just it would have been a different experience. So, and absolutely. And, yeah. and as you go, and as you go, even when you go through the litigation process, and you hire two attorneys, and and everything the attorney does adds up. You know, point two phone call, point six memo, letter, and you know it adds up. It gets very expensive to have a consulting attorney. You only charge when you're consulting him or asking him or her a question. Uh, and and another myth that, that's out there is so we already started the divorce process, we already have attorneys, it's too late. No, it's not. You can tell your attorneys, look, we want to take a break here. Let's stop the litigation process. We're going to go, to, we're going to try mediation before we spend too much time and money. And you can even keep those attorneys that you have as a valuable source as a consulting attorney. So there are so many options out there. And like you said in the beginning, and it's something I very much um, try to get across, is that making an educated decision knowing what all your options are is much better than jumping the gun and, and thinking what you have to do without getting all the information. Jeffrey, when you talk about making an educated decision, I get that 100%. That's why we do Divorce Rx. If you're on this and you're listening to this, we have others about accounting rules, finances, the tax implications of all of these negotiation things. Please watch that. Please don't be afraid of it. Please get on there and just listen. But, you know, get in bed with your laptop, do whatever you have to do, just listen. But, you know, to make an educated decision, when do you know that mediation isn't maybe right for you? How do you make that judgment call that mediation is, and I'm already on page two of my notes, by the way, no um, that, uh, you know, when do you know that mediation is either a thumbs up or definitely a thumbs down? How do you make that decision? Well, it all, it all depends, I think, on a couple. Uh, once they understand what mediation is and how the process works, they, they and then talk to the mediator, who they or they're thinking of hiring. You know, they have to see if there's a synergy, if there's a fit there, and if they they feel comfortable. You know, every different mediators have different styles, even different attorneys. So I think that's the first thing. There's different schools of thought of uh, when mediation can't work or doesn't work. And I don't know if there's an absolute for that. For example. Uh, most people will say that, and I, I think I agree, that in a domestic violence issue, uh, mm -hmm. it's probably not fit for mediation. And that reason being is that the dominant spouse will pretty much run the mediation session. The submissive spouse, for be lack of a better term, will agree on almost anything for fear of upsetting the dominant spouse. So when the process is over, somebody's going to sign something they're not happy with, and that's not my goal. I tell couples throughout the process that it, when this is over, neither one of you are going to sign something you don't feel comfortable with or you don't understand, and that's, that's very important. So in that realm, however, I did deal with success, successfully a couple where there was an order of protection, and they both came to me. I read the order of protection. They were living separate and apart for about six or eight months, and it wasn't a physical abuse. It was like more a mental yelling and screaming type thing. Okay. So I looked at the, like I said, I looked at the um, order of protection. I consulted with a couple of my experts that I work with, and they both agreed to waive the that order of protection for the sake of meeting at mediation. So, and what I did was I made sure that she, the the wife, left, and then he wasn't allowed to leave till 30 or 40 minutes after she left uh, to alleviate any, you know, kind of blow back or blow over or him trying to follow her or being upset. And believe it or not, it was it took a little while, but I would say four months later, we finished everything and they both came to me afterwards and said, you know, how my calm my demeanor was and we didn't think we'd get through it because it was a lot of uh, heated and emotional high conflict there. Uh, right. But I was able to do that. So that's just one example. Again, uh, nothing's absolute, nothing's 100%. So that's that's what I mean about being educated. Talk to attorneys, talk to a mediator. Don't let somebody tell you what you have to do. Is what I'm is what I'm saying. Well, that's that's awesome. Let's let let let's move along. Let's see what else you got. This is awesome. Okay, and these are just some of the issues, not not all inclusive of what's covered in divorce mediation that are that are important to parties, and they want to know if it's covered or will they be able to get through it. Equal the distribution of property, marital home, um, cars, boats, vacation homes, furniture, you know, collectibles, child support, 
residential parent. Who's, where are the children going to live with most of the time? I don't like to use the term custody in my mediation because it just sounds so negative and like prison. Uh, parents, for the most part, want equal time with their children, but there has to be one main residential parent. So that's what that means. Pensions, 401k, stocks and bonds, anything like that is, is a subject that has to be distributed in, uh, when some couple is getting divorced. Now, couples have the flexibility to waive a lot of this stuff. And as I get, as I get to the end of the last one, I'll, we'll talk about that. A children's college decisions. What happens when Johnny and, and, and Mary go to, go to college? Are they going to be covered by student loans or, or grants? And if they're not, uh, how are the how is mom and dad going to allocate for those funds for college? Significant others when it comes to the children. What's too young for children to be introduced to a significant other when mom and dad start dating again and or are engaged or get married? This this is something that comes up a lot during the litigation pro, uh, mediation process. Spousal support is another issue. Now, just in these list that are listed right here, there's a lot of flexibility in the mediation and not in litigation. So for example, child support in New York, there's something called the Child Support Standards Act. And child support is based on a certain percentage based on how many children. So for example, the non-residential parent income, 17% for one child, 25% for two children, and the percentages go up a little bit from there. So let's just say, according to the Child Support Standards Act, uh, Mary and John are going through the mediation process, and it states that John's got to pay $2,000 a month in child support. John then says, well, look, I can't afford $2,000 a month because I have to maintain my own separate residence. i got to get an apartment. I'm paying for Mary's valet lessons and little Johnny's Cub Scouts and extracurricular activities. I'm paying for um, health health care the other extracurricular activities, so I can pay, and I'm just making up numbers here, $1,400 a month. And let's say Mary, the wife, agrees. Okay, that sounds about right. I could live on $1,400 a month with support for the children. As long as they both agree, they can deviate from the Child Support Standards Act. And I, I put when I put that in the agreement, as long as I put in there, the Child Support Standards Act states that John has to pay Mary $22,000 a month for child support, However, they both agree it's going to be $1,400 a month, and this is why, then the judge will sign off on that. When it comes to pensions, 401ks, that's also negotiable. Uh, John could say, okay, Mary, you keep the house, and I want to keep my pension, or any combination of that. So all these issues, and there's a lot more than what's just what's on the screen, is very flexible, and it's open to the negotiation process. Okay, that's awesome. Here, here's what the litigation process looks like. So you both go and you hire an attorney, and each party is talking to their attorney, telling them what they want. Um, you know, I want the house, I want the car, uh, and then the other party says, no, I want the house, or I want the car, and then I want the vacation home. So the communication here is going on between the parties and their attorney, sometimes between the parties, but very rarely. Uh, well, that's why the hours are there, because most attorneys say, okay, don't talk to your spouse, just talk to me. And then the attorneys talk to each other, and then go back to their uh, parties. And in the meantime, everything is adding up as far as cost, all these conversations. Then if you're lucky enough, you'll get before a judge, and a judge is going to make a decision just based on the law and nothing else, looking at your case for 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour before, you get to the judge, and a judge doesn't want to he hear from, nor will he hear from either of the parties, very rarely. He's going to want to talk to just the attorneys. So you really don't have a say, and a judge is going to tell you what to do and how to do it, and you lose control of the process. Mediation is voluntary. It's, it's inexpensive. The parties decide the outcome, and it's a win-win situation, and that's my goal when I do mediation. So I would say, based on my experience, the average cost for mediation on the high side is considerably less than $6,000 total. Each of you are going to pay more than that just in a retainer fee, like I said earlier, for an, for an attorney. 
the, the, the things that make it a little bit more expensive sometimes, where I've seen as much as 10 or just under that, is if there's maybe some experts need to be hired or consulting attorneys. Maybe somebody needs to evaluate a pension or the value of business or you need a forensic accountant. Again, all these are expenses, but they're expenses that, that you need so you know what you're signing off on. Wow, that's a that's a great that's a that's a really big huge savings. I don't remember. I wish I remembered what my mediation cost me, but it definitely was not what my litigation um, divorce was. Not anywhere close. Um, I, like I, I'm not sure what the the outcome would have been if I had um, uh, if I had. I had that consulting attorney, which, gosh, I, you know, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, and divorce, Absolutely. you know, divorce RX gives you that foresight. That's what I'm. I'm just. I'm so excited that we're having this conversation because this was one of those things that you know, learn by my mistake. So, consulting attorney, you need to throw that into the mix. And so, I'm sorry to have interrupted you, but I no love this with your puzzle pieces. Oh, thanks. And and in in regards to that, and the, what you're just talking about the, um, the the attorneys and, and things like that, and what it costs and what you should have done. Um, I I was doing some research uh, earlier this year uh, for a book that I'm doing, and this this lady she went through the divorce process. She uh, three three boys, three children. Her husband was put in jail for uh, domestic violence. Who, because he beat her, so she had her, her, her jaw wired shut. He gets out of jail. Uh, they're going through the, the, the divorce process. Uh, $120,000. They depleted their children's college funds. They had to sell real estate. They got to the point where they ran out of money, and they were forced to sign a stipulation that didn't work for, for either one of them. But they ran out of money. What are they supposed to do now? So the so the attorney recommends one thing. They both sign off on it. Later on, he t he goes back to court. He then gets custody of the children. Go figure, right? A um, uh, guy who beat his his uh, wife, he gets custody of the children. Like I said earlier, you never ever know what a judge is going to decide. It's it's absolute craziness. You're in a mediation process. It's all about talking, listening, and helping resolve the issues. Even though in a mediation process. One cup, one of the parties may not admit to the other that they understand where they're coming from or why something upsets them. In the in their subconscious, they know and they and they're attentive to that because they're in a room and they're and they're, and they're listening and they're there rather than hearing it third party through another attorney. I I love the idea that that yeah that actually helped us a lot um, being able to have that uh, neutral third party to. Um, to, to kind of be that go, that buffer, that go between, and sometimes the voice of reason. Right, and, and it is, and it's all about the underlying issues. And sometimes, you know, when dealing with high conflict couples, and let's say we're at a standstill and we're not getting anywhere, and all that's happening is yelling and screaming and accusatory uh, words back and forth, I'll do what's called a caucus, and where I'll give each of them equal time alone with me to, to try to get at the underlying issues. And what I tell them is, and again, I use this very rarely, but only when necessary. I'll ask them, okay, what's you know what's going on here? Why you know why can't we get a resolution to this? And in addition, the caucus session is strictly confidential, and unless that person gives me permission to share when we get back in a room what we discussed, I won't do that. But even if I don't get that permission, I know what the real underlying issues are, and it helps me facilitate and try to mediate and get them to that resolution without sharing that information. I like that. I agree with that. Yeah, that, that, that we actually had to have that happen a couple okay. of times. And, 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 and you found, and can you confirm that you found that it, that it really helped yeah, with the process? It was very helpful to help us just move on. You know, put, put a, you know, put a, you know, put a period on it and move. And that was, um, that was very helpful, yes. Here's the mediation process, and so you're in a room, there's a mediator, and there are two parties, and there's communication between everybody, from the mediator to each party, from the party to the party, there's no third, there's no third party 
thing where he said, she said, everybody's right there. I make it a very, uh, I let everybody know in the beginning of the mediation process that everything we discuss is confidential. If the procedure were to um, break off and they decide to go to, to attorneys, attorneys can't subpoena my records, they can't call me and ask me what happened, I can't be uh, called to court as a witness. Uh, when we talk on the phone, when we do emails, everybody gets included in all emails and all phone conversations. So there's never that idea of, wow, what is, you know, what is she telling him, what is he telling him, he's on or she's on their side. There's, it's total neutrality, total um, disclosure between everybody. So you cannot be brought into a court of law because, because of being a certified mediator and that, that that is a part, that is an understanding of your job? I, absolutely, and I have them sign a, a confidentiality agreement and retainer agreeing to that. Okay. Okay, and I've never been called or asked, but I've heard about other mediators who have, and I've had this clause because the whole purpose of this is to try to resolve an issue, and get and not go to the litigation process. W it wouldn't be fair for me to produce what happened in the mediation for either side to use against the other in the litigation, right? And and that's that's typically agreed to within the court system in the in the United States that mediation documentation is not to be brought into a divorce. Litigation. To the best of my knowledge, it is. I, again, I've never had I've never had the, the uh, issue. Again, I've had other mediators who have, but because of that that um, stipulation in the confidentiality agreement, uh, they couldn't be subpoenaed. But you know, who knows? There, there are things that happen uh, that are unique, and uh, maybe it's happened in the past. But again, to my knowledge, I try to prevent that, and I I lay it, I lay it out where they both agree beforehand and. So I've, I've never run into that as an issue or problem. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Interesting to know. This is just a little bit quick thing about in-house trainings where I go into organizations and help resolve conflict as a true neutral third party. And this is, you know, where people get to talk and, and talk about their ideas and, and what's going on in an organization. They're much more likely to share those things when there's a neutral third party and when they are aware of there's no fear of retribution or anything like that and all, all organizations run more effectively just like mediation going through divorce when when they can get to the, what the real issues are and help resolve them so that's another thing that I do that I really enjoy doing and it's interesting when you go into you know organizations or groups of what goes on internally where there's maybe one person that's always running the show and, and so forth well, that's awesome. It, it, it's you know, conflict resolution is a topic that we've uh, touched on here at Divorce RX um, and the Cafe D. Just because fighting and conflict is a lousy way to live when you don't have to. So I'm I'm grateful that that's something that you that you help people deal with. And maybe we'll have you come on and talk about some ways that you help people with solve that conflict because. You know, the, the conflict behind closed doors is very, uh, very different probably than the conflict um, uh, that, that we see in, in the, the, the workplace. So um, our, it, it, since we're kind of chatting up real quickly about um, uh, conflict, how get, can you give, first of all, let's get some resources um, available for uh, how people can find a mediator. Um, where there's a, if, are there some resources out there that our people can um, can take a look at? Yeah, well, obviously you could do a, a Google search or yellowpages.com in your local area. But there are two websites that uh, I'm listed on and I have used: uh, mediation.com and uh, mediate.com are two sources that kind of give you a list of and available of what mediators are around in, in a local area. Uh, but, but the best bet, I think, is to, you know, go to Google, you know, type in mediation, divorce mediation, you know, talk to a mediator or two and or a, an attorney or two. And like we talked earlier, get educated. Know what, what they're telling you, what, what makes you feel comfortable. Um, I offer uh, a free consultation where both parties come in I have 
what I have run into, for example, is one what usually one will make the initial phone call, as you know, right? So one spouse will call and well can you come in can you can I just come in and speak to you by myself? And I and I tell them I don't do that, and there's a reason I don't. But to take a step back, when I have them on a the phone, I don't get too much detailed information because if I'm going to retain them in the mediation process, I want to be able to be that true neutral third party. So I don't want to hear all of one side. So I'll get basic information, uh, how long they've been married, are their children, are they both on the same page as what's going to happen moving forward. The reason I don't bring one of them in by themselves is, let's say I do that. Uh, Vicky, you call me, you come in, we discuss the mediation process, and, and you like what I have to say. You go home to your husband and say, I just met with Jeff, who's a mediator, he's great. Uh, we, sh we, we got an appointment with him next Thursday to start the mediation process. Right away, your husband's going to think, oh, what did she tell him? He's probably on her side. Uh, it's just not, it just doesn't work. It works better when all parties are there in front of me. They're both able to ask questions that they have, no matter what they are, and for me to share information that, you know, to see if we're a good fit. But Jeffrey, why don't you stop sharing your screen? This was, I know this was your last slide, but let's so we can see your beautiful face. Okay, and I have, uh, in regards to, okay. There you are. There you are. Fantastic. So, um, so the, so trying to see a couple when they come into your office, you want to see them both at the same time, so that you, the, the important part of this is that so that you are neutral. Correct. And more, more and importantly, the, the suggestion that you may not be is not there. Correct. And more importantly, is that they feel comfortable because they're not going to hire me or retain me if they don't feel comfortable with me or they don't think I could do a good job. And, what, and, uh, what is the requirement to become, what did, what, what, what was the training, what was the, the, uh, uh, the work that you had to do to become a certified mediator? Well, in New York, uh, there's no certification per se, but I did my training through the uh, New York Center for Mediation and Training. I did both uh, beginning and advanced. I also did an advanced training with the New York City Bar Association on med for mediation, 40-hour course. I'm certified with the Nassau Supreme Court as an arbitrator, um, and that's different from divorce, but just to explain, I help resolve attorney fee disputes, attorney-client fee disputes. And most, if not all, of those are matrimonial actions. And to see these billing and the amount of money that attorneys are charging and people don't don't want to pay or for whatever reason it's just astronomical it's just amazing the numbers so I'm involved on both ends so I see what goes on it gives me a better understanding in addition to the organizations I belong to the CLEs I go to the seminars and things like that I'm always learning talking to other mediators peer mediation groups that I belong to um, so it's always an ongoing process always learning uh, I'll never be at the point where I know everything so you've so you've gone through a lot of training. Is it is it something similar? I mean, because I, I assume that you have to know a, an awful lot about divorce law in the state of New York. Um, and and let and, and a, a question for you now that we're into the tech age and you and I are on a Google Hangout. Is there such a thing now as um, a mediation appointment with someone like yourself on Skype? Or on other uh, on these other you know platforms like Google Hangouts, like we're right. using. One of, one of the services I offer is online mediation, uh, like you know, like you said, the Google Hangout, the Skype, uh, WebEx, Zoom, different things like that. I've done it via phone conference uh, for with couples with everybody on the line. You know, sometimes one one party will be in New York and the others in Florida, or or in another state, or they're both out of town or whatever case may be. So I'm able to still resolve and come up with an agreement with them, uh, even though they might not be in New York at the time. But, but, but they might live here, but they might not be here. Or they could be from a totally different state. In that case, while I not, might not be able to prepare the, the divorce package for them because each state has its own jurisdiction and different things, I could prepare an agreement so they could then take it to an attorney to formalize in their state and saving a lot of time and money. Yeah, that, and that's really, at the end of the day, that's really what this is about because you, we all know what, um, 
uh, this how it's going to end. Um, we know that we are going, you know, for a divorce, and um, we can spend, you know, a fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars on divorce, or you can you can spend thirteen thousand dollars with all of the other, you know, ten thousand, five thousand, whatever. That. Absolutely. It's still, an astronomical amount of money to get uh, to get divorced, but you know, it seems like that's and also of our. Sorry. Done, and also, what I do is, I, you know, I try to make the, the process as affordable as possible. The, the divorce mediation world, or in my practice, it's not a repeat business. My repeat business I get is from referrals and and other people I meet, and so they're not going to refer me business unless they're happy. So what I've done is a little bit unique, and I haven't seen many mediators do it. There might be a few, but I haven't seen any. Is I have all inclusive packaging and pricing on my website. So I have packages, and everything is covered from the filing fees to the agreement to the no-fault divorce package, so they know what they're spending and what they're getting into. So I'll have couples who call me all the time and say, well, the mediator says it's this much an hour, and then the agreement is this amount, the, the divorce package costs this, the filing fees, disbursements cost this. They don't know, really know what they're getting into. At the end, they get this bill, so I try to make it as affordable as possible. Um, and, and helping people again my with my main goal is adding value to people so how do you weigh you know when we talk about affordability how do you weigh the uh, the emotional cost for the children and the whole family in this whole process because it sounds like in from from what I'm gathering that this process is probably kinder and gentler to the whole family do you agree Absolutely, and I always make it. And when there are children involved, I, I reiterate and talk. Always talk about the best interest of the children. And nobody, not a judge or an attorney, knows what's best for the children than mom and dad. And while you may not be husband and wife anymore, you still always be mom and dad. And so sometimes it gets heated and things go on. And somebody will say, "You're not going to do that with my daughter or my son." I, I I quickly stop that and I say, "You mean Johnny's both." your son or some, some mediators will actually make the couples bring in a, a pictures of the children and put them on the conference table during the mediation process um, so it's it's very important to keep that uh, the importance of that and not make them objects <laughs> the children because that's right. when it property, that, that's when right? They, right they're not property they're, they're little they're not people. correct and what we're doing in this whole process is that uh, this this determines their own life path. So I think that that was the most, to me, that is the biggest financial win is that uh, you walk out with healthy, emotionally emotionally healthy children and as, as, as much as can possibly be expected when you have, so you, you're, you're getting financial freedom by this process by not, you know, spending all that money in litigation if you don't have to. Um, right. if, you're in the, if that's the right situation for you, um, it's a win-win for your family. Um, it's a win-win for your soul. So I, that's what I love about the mediation process. The one thing that I'm grateful for in this particular webinar, and, and I'm grateful for you, Jeffrey, is that I learned what I did wrong, and that was I didn't have a consulting attorney. So I think that I would like to say to anyone out there, learn from my mistakes. That's what I'm here for. That's why I've put this all together so that you guys can uh, go through this and we can save you time, money, and your sanity. So today, I hope that that absolutely was the case and that, that mediation may or may not be a process for you. Jeffrey, we're going to put up your contact information, but right now, we're going to go over to... Um, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to. I just had two more slides I want to share with a, with an offer for everybody who's here today. Oh. Um, and it, and this has helped me in my mediation practice and and moving forward in regards to what I do and becoming a better person and so forth. And you see, we love offers, Jeffrey. We love okay. love love them so that we can um, uh, we can absolutely get them. Okay. Uh, and and this and this isn't necessarily linked to or in regards to the divorce process, but you know now you're divorced, now you're moving on, um, 
you go to date again, you, you want you get your confidence back, you want to become a better person, a better leader. Um, I've been certified by the John Maxwell team and I offering a free ten week power of the mastermind group, study group. Uh, one starting on October twelfth, uh, from eight PM to nine PM and the other one on Tuesday, October thirteenth from seven AM to eight AM. So if you want more information, I'll show you on the next slide how you can contact me. It's free. All you have to do is purchase the book. And it's a very good 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, you know, to help you become a better person. And again, no no cost to, to anyone. It's offered free to everyone who's attending this webinar. No wonderful. Well, you know that Jeffrey, this is going to be living up on our website for years and years and years to come. So uh, we will have to um, figure something out on that uh, as well. So. Um, so I know that you're an amazing uh, leadership trainer, and, and then, yes, that is an important part. So thank you so much for that, and that's an amazing offer. Um, when so again, this is, this is my contact information with my website and phone number, and to the left is a book that I, would, that I authored with a few other um, leaders and, and so forth. And, um, awesome. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that's awesome. So, so – um, when they take when they take your classes, this would be about maybe helping them be stronger people, personal development kind of stuff. Yeah, personal development. You know, I'll talk. You know, one of the main things, if I could just share real quick, uh, that John Maxwell talks about is raising your lid. He talks about a lid. It can only go so far of where you are. So if in each section of your life or sections that you want to improve on, and let's say you're currently a six. Um, so how do you get to a seven or eight or nine or ten? You know, you want to surround yourself with and get educated by people who can help you raise your lid, right? To get to the next level, uh, adding value to people, um, you know, just things like that. I, I know, I know, it's not something we can get into in. in well, maybe we'll you know, do that. Do that maybe in another in another um, maybe on a Tuesday. Absolutely. Okay. And if anybody has questions, you know, please feel free to email me. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. As a matter of fact, we're going to go right now over to our very private Facebook group. If you are listening to this and you are not a member, let me see your beautiful face again, Jeffrey. Um, if you are not a member of uh, uh, the Cafe D community, we hope that you will go over there and join us in membership. It starts at just $7 a month. It is a really easy thing, and you get to speak to experts like Jeffrey. We have attorneys there. We have accountants. We have financial advisors. We have mental health counselors, from marriage and family counselors to child psychologists and real estate agents and insurance and mortgage, all sorts of different resources there to help you get through the divorce process as quickly, as easy, easily, and as painlessly as possible. So thank you, Jeffrey. Um, we're going to put up our website at www.thecafed.com. And join us in membership because we're going to head over to our very, very private Facebook group where you can talk to Jeffrey right now. And if you are watching this in, in a replay, just know that um, you can link to Jeffrey in our private Facebook group and you can contact him and he'll be um, hopping on to any of your questions. He'll be one of the experts that will peruse. And if it's, just, if it's not Jeffrey that you need, we have a lot back there. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, again, that email uh, the website is www.thecafed.com, and we will see you in our very private Facebook group. Jeffrey, you are amazing. Thank you so much. And thank I, you for having me. Thank you so much, and, and I, and I uh, look forward to seeing you in our private Facebook group. Thanks, Sounds Jeff. Sounds good. I'll see everybody there. Take care. Bye-bye.